Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another VFR 800 video. Obviously, um, if you follow the channel for the VFR content, you'll notice that I haven't done much recently. That's because I haven't really needed to do anything with the VFR because she's been pretty, uh, pretty reliable. Uh, and uh, obviously I haven't really had to do any maintenance. Okay, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to demonstrate a complete fairing removal on the bike. Now, I hadn't really given it any consideration to doing this video before. However, I have had several comments from people asking me to do one. Um, I guess they just want to know in their head what they're letting themselves in for before they have a go at it. Um, I guess, and that's perfectly fine. I get, I really, really do get that. Um, obviously, something's only easy if you know how to do it. So watching somebody else to do it, you know, a lot of people are visual learners and absolutely why not. So, uh, yeah, what we'll do, we'll uh, be taking off all the side panels, top fairing, uh, seat unit, um, and, and yeah, and I'll be going through all of that, uh, all that process. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get stuck into it. Okay, where we're going to begin is at the back of the bike with the seat unit. It's the probably the easiest um, part of the, the you know the fairing to remove. There's not a great deal to it. Um, in the case of my bike, obviously I have a luggage rack, which does add an extra step uh, to removing the uh, to removing the fairing. And what we need to do in order to get it off is obviously remove um, the necessary parts of it in order to get it off. We don't need to take the side uh, the side rails off. They they don't interfere with the. Um, with the suit unit at all but the top plate and these arms down to the grab rails do so um what we need to do is obviously remove the top plate and remove these arms if you don't have the luggage rack then you can skip this step and then we'll go straight to the bolts uh, holding the grab rails on so with that in mind um, what we need to do is we need to remove six nuts that hold this plate um, onto the side rails here and these rails here and to uh, to get these nuts off what we need to do is we need to gently using a tiny screwdriver this is a little watchmakers one being careful not to mar the thing up is pop these caps out there's six of them uh, and then underneath there is a hex head just like just like you can see there so what I'll do I'll get these other five caps off and then we can uh, we can whip this off Okay, there we are, all six off. And if we look underneath, we can see the nuts on the uh, on the underside. So all we need to do is put a spanner on and wind each one out. Really is that easy. So I'll get all six of these out and then we can whip the plate off. And there we go, that is the top plate removed. So now all we need to do is remove these two arms from the grab rails and then the grab rails will also come off too. The next step we're gonna take is we're gonna remove the rear seat completely from the bike. And then we can remove the four bolts holding the grab rails and these rails on. So if you didn't have the luggage rack, you would essentially be starting from this point. Okay, next thing we need to do, these two and these two. Whip them all out and then the grab rails and these two um, frame rails for the top box will just lift straight off the bike. So, dead easy, nothing to it. Just crack them all off. There we go. And the washer, another bolt with its washer, and then the frame rails removed. Now, on this, obviously, there is a spacer which helps in fitment of this, but you, if you haven't got a top box, you won't have these spacers. So, yeah, I'll put all this to one side and get the other one off. Okay, with the, uh, with the grab rails removed, seat unit is literally held on with four more screws now one there, one there. One just down there, and the same on this side. So what we'll do, we'll take these two out first. Nice 
Amazing. Right. them two and then one's on the side again really really simple and there we go now one thing I will point out uh, on a lot of the fairing panels there are different types of screw the side ones have this shoulder just like you can see the ones on the top are shoulderless so just remember that they are different and they have to go back in the same place um, also you will notice that they aren't actually the same size you can see that the diameter of the screws is different so it's worth bearing in mind if you can get them in um, you will sometimes find though that you'll have screws that will fit in the holes but it's not necessarily the ones that they came out of Okay, now we're ready to uh, remove the seat unit, but there is one other step that we need to do as we lift it off. Okay, so if you gently grab your, your panels, they, they, there is a lot of flex in them, they're very, very flexible. Gently grab them, and what we want to do is lift but push backwards at the same time. And just like that, you'll see that it'll, it'll lift up. Now what you've got to do, there's, if you look in here, just in here and in this side those parts of the fairing are actually underneath this bar which is why you need to go backwards before you can before you can bring it up now what we can do is we can lift up like this um, but what we've got to do is we've got to disconnect all the wiring that goes to the, uh, the stop lamps the turn signals all that good stuff um, before we can before we can uh, before we can remove it. So it's simply a case of giving it a little twist. It can be a bit stiff. It can be a bit stiff, especially these indicator ones, they are incredibly stiff. There we go. There's And lastly, oh yeah, very, very stiff. Oh, there we go, crikey. We got there. Now, as you can see, that is a toe unit removed. It really is that easy, there's not a great deal to it. Now what we can do is we can remove all the bulbs from these just so that they don't get damaged or you know, just tuck them neatly out the way somewhere where they're not gonna get bashed against anything and broken um, otherwise you just have to replace them again when they uh, you know when it comes to um, when it comes to putting it back together okay so that's the first stage done and as you can see we've got a lot of access to a lot of the stuff uh, under here obviously if you wanted to you know remove exhaust and stuff like that this is um, a place where you would start okay next what we'll do is we'll move on to the side panels Okay, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at removing the side panels. Um, but first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this piece uh, under here, which is joined to the side panel, as you can see, by a couple of bolts. Now, what I will say on mine is that there's a few clips missing. Up here on each side, there should be a couple of um, the expanding rivets with the push pin that goes through the middle. So you put the pin in, and then once you put the, the, the pin in the center, it can't come out. Mine are missing, and they've been missing, well, as long as I've had the bike, to be perfectly honest. I really should get around to replacing them. I've just never bothered. Um, so what I need to do is, obviously, I need to remove uh, just the two screws in order to um, in order to get it off. And it literally is a case of just winding these two out. The wheel does get in the way, um, so you just need to nip it to one side and pull the screws out. So you've got two this side, two that side. Once those are out, um, obviously on your bike, if you actually do have the, the clips, what, to get the clips out, what you do is you push the pin inside 
and then the, the whole thing will just come out. It really is, it really is that easy. Um, I, I know that a couple of people get confused by how they actually work, but yeah, the, the pin, if you push it all the way inside, it's no longer preventing the, uh, the, the, the little arms from being pushed inside, so the whole thing will come out. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll whip that out, and then uh, we can look at the side panels. Right then, as you can see, all the four of the bolts are out. Um, now, as I said before, um, the, there is a couple of clips missing, and as you can see, there's the hole just in there uh, where it's missing, where a screwdriver's pointing out, and it's the same on the other side. However, what we do have up here is the clip um, where it meets the, uh, the the side, the, the top fairing. That one there needs to come out. So, in order to get it out, as I said before, what we need to do is just push in the center push in the center and then the whole clip will come out um, just like so as you can see that's how it works now to reset it all we need to do is push it up like so and then it's ready to go in so you just put it in and then clip it in and as you can see it opens up and can't be removed so so yeah it's um they're pretty pretty straightforward um, but yeah there's one of them on each side, so I'll get the one out this side. And reset that one. And there we go. So I'll pop them to one side and then they're good to uh, be reinstalled later on. So uh, because we are missing the other clips, that is all that there is um, holding this panel in as you can see now the sides literally just pop out there's nothing untoward with them and they are quite flexible so yeah um, there we go so yeah the um, the clips that I was talking about go in those two holes there and this one came out of that hole there. Uh, ignore my uh, spanner rash on my knuckle, I did that yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, it's one of those kind of wounds that doesn't matter what you do, you always bang it on something and then open it up again. So yeah, I apologize for uh, apologize for the gore in the video. Um, I'll try not, to, uh, try not to show it too much. I might go and put a plaster on it in a moment. Anyway, I'm digressing. The, um, yeah, those two, those two holes there should have had clips in, but uh, as I said, they were missing, and that was the one that we just removed. So yeah, there we go. That is, um, there's that, that is that piece removed. Uh, what you can do, and what I've certainly done in the past, is if you're just removing um, one side panel, obviously you only need to remove um, the bolts and the clips in one side in order to get that panel off. But if you are removing both, what you can do is leave one side in remove one side, take that panel off, and then that will come out with that side panel. You don't necessarily need to, um, you know, uh, take, take it completely out. Um, but I just wanted to demonstrate how it is. Um, obviously, it's a shame that those clips are missing, because uh, then I can't, you know, show, show you that. But um, yeah, you, you'll get the idea. It's just been more of these. Um, anyway, now we can actually remove the, uh, the side panels. Okay. In order to get this side panel off, there are a few screws that need to come out, but first there's two trim clips underneath that I'm going to uh, remove, and they are very, um, they, they are exactly the same as the two that I, I removed uh, at the front. Um, so the first one is just here, and there you go, there's one, and there is another one. So I'll get the other one out, and then um, uh, that'll be both of those out. There's, there is literally just two of them, um, and then the uh, the bottom of the fairings will be able to be pulled apart. Um, that's all that there is. Uh, they do overlap. There is like a little um, there is like a little flap that overlaps um, to lock them together. But uh, yeah, that's um, that's all there is to it. So I'll get the other one of these out, and then we'll look at getting some of the screws out of the side panel. Right then, side panel has as you can see, I've removed those two clips, and now it's free from the other side. And what we need to do now is remove all the screws. There's one there, one there, one there, one there one there one there and then on this side there's another one here by the side stand um that each side is identical except for this side has this one the other side obviously doesn't because it doesn't come back here by the side stand um but other than that the screws are all in the same place so what i need to do is get all of those screws out and then the panel will come off so give me a second i'll get them all out and then i'll bring you back in when we're actually going to take the panel off Uh, 
and there we go. That is the side panel removed and all the screws are here. So yeah, you need to put them somewhere safe. Now, again, going back to what we said when we removed the seat unit, there are different lengths and sizes of screws. Some are shouldered, some aren't. So when you take them out, just bear in mind that they do need to go back in to the same, you know, the same location that they came out of. Um, otherwise you'll struggle. And again, some of them are fatter and thinner than, than the others. Okay, so I'll put this somewhere safe. I'll get the other side off and then we'll bring it back in and we'll be looking at the top fairing. Okay, so that's both, uh, both the fairing side panels removed, as you can see. Now, what we're left with, um, other than the top fairing, is a couple of little infill panels. We've got one here, one here, and then there's one there and one there. And as you can see, there's not a great deal to those. They're quite loose. Um, but what we'll do is we'll start with these ones. The one over the battery is uh, really simple to remove. You've got a little pull clip here and then another one just there. Pull them up there. As you can see, that's how they how they work. Pull them up, and then that one comes off. Really, really easy, um, and that gives you access to your battery. This one, however, has the same push clips. So, as before, push it in just like so, and then they can be removed. And oh, hang on, sorry, three of them. Another one just there. They can be removed. And. There you go, that is that one removed. Uh, and with this one uh, taken out of the picture, you can see here you've got the proportioning valve, the bleed nipple, and where all the hoses are for the brakes and everything. So um, if you're doing a brake, um, a brake line renewal, you will need to access this part of the bike. So we'll put them to one side, drop the, the little uh, fasteners inside like that. Right, what we'll do next is we'll have a look at these ones. Now these are pretty simple. There is one more push clip just inside there where my finger is. I don't know if you can see that on the camera very easily or not, but there is another push clip just here, which I'll give it a little, give it a little push. And I'm trying to, there we go. And there we are. And now is that one removed. Now, obviously we would be able to pull that out. I've got this switch in here, which is actually fixed in position um, and it's glued in. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to move that one out of the way myself. However, the one on this side, if I do the same to the clip, give it a little push, remove, give it a little push, remove the clip, which I'm having to do with the wrong hand. There we go, that's easier. There, and then comes out just like that. So that's the other infill panel removed. And what we can actually do is reset the little clip. Come on, what are you doing? There we go, reset the little clip. And we can just push it through the hole if we want to, to stop it getting lost. Okay, so yeah, that one I can't actually remove because that is glued in place and the, connect, uh, the, uh, the connector behind it is actually soldered. So that one's just going to stay there. Um, but yeah, now we're in a position to look at removing the top, mount, uh, the, the top fairing, the top cowl, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit more involved because obviously you've got the clocks and everything mounted into it. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll move on to that next. Okay, so now we're in the, uh, the position to take the top the top cowl off or the top fairing um, and this is probably the uh, the most complicated part of the whole process because there's a lot that you have to do in order to get it off properly uh, and where we're going to start is with these little infill panels just in here and these are held in with one screw so with your JIS screwdriver simply take the screw out it'll drop down and then you can see there's two little tangs at each end that hold it in position same on this side. Oops, let's grab that one. There we go. Okay, now they're out. You can see here, we've got a screw on either side which uh, mount the windscreen in. So we'll pop them out and then the windscreen will literally just uh, just pop out. Okay. Not 
particularly tight. But then I don't suppose they have to be. One quite long. And two. Okay. Lift and pull forward. You can see here your little hook so what you need to do is lift it before you can uh, before you can pull it out uh, and that is the screen removed pretty straightforward okay let me put this to one side and then we'll move on to the next step right now that we've got the screen off we need to remove this panel here and as you can see it's fairly you know it's fairly loose all it does is it clips in these little clips here just slot in underneath the uh, the top cowl but this panel covers the clocks as well in order to get this off, we also need to remove the two, these two coloured pieces here, these two side portions. And you can see here, we've got two more of these clips that we're now all incredibly familiar with. Just pop them in the centre and then pull them out. Right then, now that they're out, what we need to do is we need to remove the side panels. And these are incredibly awkward um, because you kind of have to move them in two directions at the same time and it's kind of difficult but doable and you have to kind of rely on the flexibility of the panel um like so there we go there's one out um and, and yeah as you can see it was a bit it is a bit of a pain to uh to get out um but yeah it's uh it is doable so i need to get the one on the other side and then we can look at this panel but what i will say with this off you can here see the uh you know the fuses for the fan, the clock, um, the lights, etc., etc. So if you're uh, ever wondering where the fuse box is on the bike, it's hidden behind this panel. So if you just want to get to the fuses, you only need to remove a couple of screws um, to uh, to actually access it. Um, just that one and that push pin, and uh, the, the the panel can come out. You don't actually need to remove the side fairing in order to get this off. So that's uh, you know that's worth bearing in mind. Right, I'll get the one on that side off, and then we can uh, we can pop this panel off. Okay, so now that those two side panels are off, we can get this little cowl off. Now, as I said, it just pops off at the front and it does go over the clocks. Now, this is the hard part and it's really, really hard to see what's going on. So you probably won't be able to see it on the camera, but I will show you what I'm, what I'm doing afterwards. There are two grommets with like a peg and a peg is actually kind of at that angle. So we need to bring this whole cowling that up in that kind of direction. And the grommets, the little, the little studs go into these rubber grommets and because they've been in there a little while, they're going to be a little bit, a little bit snug. So just bear that in mind and you may need to lever them out, um, but they will come. Just be careful with them. You don't want to snap them. Um, I will show you what it is I'm actually looking at in a second, which will aid you should you need to do this but they are a they are a right pain to they are a right pain to get out a little bit of wiggling and they will come so what's probably there right there's one what would be a good idea on reinstallation of these is a little bit of just a little bit of silicon grease just to help you seat them and then obviously that'll help them come out again should you need to do this in the future so yeah they're uh, right paying these ah, there we go okay so what we were doing these two studs here were in them grommets and yeah they're they're ever so tight and you don't obviously you don't obviously want to snap them off because then the whole plastic will be loose. So there we are, that is, that is that removed and that's a bit of a pain. So now we've got that off, we can move on to the next step. Okay, next stage, 
is the mirrors need removing. As you can see, they're actually bolted directly onto this frame uh, and literally just held in with two Allen header screws. So nothing too dramatic. Again, just crack them off. Same on both sides. One screws up. And there's one. And there's two. So that is left hand mirror. I'll get the right one, uh, the right one off, and then we'll uh, we'll move on to the next step. Right, with the uh, with the plastics around the clock removed, you can quite clearly see these two nuts just underneath here, and that is what needs to be removed next. Just correct both of them off. Behind each of these nuts is like a little collar, which also needs to be removed, which I'll grab now. Like a, like a sleeve with a, yeah, there we go. So that needs to come out as well, both of them. Now these, these studs are part of the fairing, but they come through the bottom of the bottom of the clocks, if you know what I mean. Um, so what's going to happen is the clocks are going to stay where they are because the clocks are actually mounted onto this, this steel bracket here. So now what we need to do is we need to bring the whole fairing forward. We need to take, unhook it from where the mirrors mount and then just gently lean it forward and then we've got access to all the connectors um, for the headlights and all that sort of stuff now this one in the center here this one just here that goes to this it, goes, it basically goes right to the front end of the nose cone that one is for the temperature sensor which gives you your outside you know your outside temperature uh, tells you how hot it is disconnect the main beams <sighs> The dipped headlight on the uh, on that side has already disconnected itself, and there we go. Okay, next we've got the turn signals. They need to be disconnected, and also these ones. Quite actually, it's actually quite difficult with only one hand. Uh, the easiest way to do the turn signals is to just give them a twist, just like so. They actually come out really, really easily like that. But if you're trying to change the bulb without taking, when you have, you know, when you're not in the position to take the fairing off, getting your hand in there to do that is incredibly difficult. And it's actually accessed through this little panel here. Um, I did do a video on it ages ago, um, so go and check that out if you want to. I'll leave a link at the top if you do if you do want to see. Uh, how that's done but there we are that is the uh the top cowl off so now if you wanted to remove the headlights uh, and what have you there's all the screws all the way around that hold it in uh, you just literally take those screws out and then the whole headlight assembly will come out and for the uh, for the turn signals at the front it's one two screws and then that's out as well and that is all there is to it um, these are your side lights um, so uh, yeah, they, they they live just up under here. That's what we disconnected uh, next next to the uh, the indicators is the side lights. Okay, so obviously I need to uh, put this away somewhere safe where it's not going to get damaged. 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think what we'll do next is we will remove the tank. Now, um, I have removed the tank previously. I think I removed it when I did the um, when I did the start of our sink. I think I removed the tank then. Um, so the process is going to be exactly the same. But obviously, ideally, you want it to have no fuel in it, or very little, or drain it out. Um, so I've got very, very little fuel in the tank at the moment. So it's going to be pretty straightforward for me. But uh, yeah, well, that's what we'll move on to next. Is uh, is removal of the tank. Right then, first step to uh, to removal of the tank is the two eight mil bolts right at the front. Crack them off, and then wind them up. I'm taking the whole assembly with the little collar as well. with them out the tank itself will lift up but it will only lift so high and then it'll uh, it'll stop because we've got this this little uh, uh well it's like a safety line really it's to stop you over stressing any of the pipe work or anything underneath the tank um or damaging anything um so we can remove that by just simply taking that bolt out and we'll do that in a second. What we will need to do is remove these two 10 mil bolts at the back in order to lift the tank clear of the bike. Um, but under here, what we've got is we've got a high pressure fuel line from the pump and we've got an electrical connector and then we've got the overflow and the breather. Um, they all, uh, oh, and also the return line. We've got the return line there as well. Um, that'll all, all need disconnecting. So we'll start with the electrical connector which again with only one hand is quite difficult then the same on the fuel pump okay there we go and then the overflow and the breather and then we'll just leave them hanging down like so Right, um, what I'll do now is I will disconnect that, I will remove the two 10mm bolts and then what we can do is we can um, lift the tank a bit further up and we can disconnect the return line and the high pressure line. Okay, right. Now under here what we can see is, as I said, the high pressure line and the um, low pressure return. And what I'm going to do, the, the, the tank is pretty empty, it's not bone dry, there is a little bit in there, um, so I don't want to get what is in there everywhere. Um, I'm going to just pop a bit of tissue down just to catch anything, and then this hose clip, just pop it off. Right, now this may well be a little bit stuck, let me... Move that back out of the way a bit more so it's not in the way of my hand. There we go. Right. It may be stuck, as I said, and it may need a little bit of encouragement to get it off uh, with a screwdriver. By the looks of it. So here we go. I've got a screwdriver. Just give it a little pry off. There we go. Right, let's see if any comes out. If any does, all I can do, what I can do is just tap my finger over the, over the top. Yeah, there we go, there is a bit. So, we are gonna lose some fuel, as you can see. There is a bit in there. So what I'll do, I'll grab a jar, and um, I will capture uh, the remaining fuel out of the return so we don't get it everywhere and then once once it's completely empty we can then uh, we can then get that off so give me a second to go and grab a jar and then we'll be right back right then there we go as you can see the uh, the fuel has stopped leaking out we uh, we did catch a couple of jars full there was actually a lot more in there than i actually expected so now we now we've uh, emptied it out what we can do is we can um, we can loosen off the the high pressure line now this will be tight and one thing that's worth noting is once this is 
and been undone. The um, the washers that seal it. Uh, there we go. That was quite tight. Yeah, and it goes with quite a punch. Right, yeah. There's two washers that seal it, much like a brake banjo. Um, and once they're undone, obviously you need to. Well, you can you can reuse them if you anneal them, but um, obviously uh, you'll you'll either have to replace them or anneal them. Um, either way, uh, don't expect it to you know just seal up as it is. Okay, there we go. So there's one washer. Now these are actually copper ones, which I fitted. The uh, the factory ones are aluminium, and there we are. So. That is the fuel line removed. Let me move that over there. Okay, so now what we need to do is obviously just put this somewhere out of the way where it's not going to get damaged. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all there is to it. Now I have got the cap open at the moment, so I'll take the key out, put the key back in the ignition where I leave it, and there we go. So. That is the fuel tank removed. So, yeah, uh, not too, not too difficult. Obviously, it's just a bit of a pain if you've got fuel in it that you need to uh, that you do need to remove. Uh, but other than that, it's just a couple of connectors, that one clip, and then uh, the um, the but the banjo for the for the high pressure line. So. What I'll do, I'll get all of this, um, I'll get this uh, put away safely so it's not gonna get broken or damaged or kicked or scratched, etc., etc. And then, uh, yeah, we'll come back and we'll have a look at what we're left with. Okay, we're almost there. Um, most of the bodywork's off. Literally the only thing left on the, uh, on the, on the bike is the, the front mudguard. Now, I was thinking about not bothering with this because it's pretty simple, but I thought, you know, for the sake of completeness, why not? Uh, and it is literally held in with Two Allen headed screws on either side to the fork leg. So there's two this side, two the other side. One and two, and then just here we've got a couple of bolts. Now one is for this little block um, that the brake lines go through and the other one uh, holds a little clamp that the ABS line goes through. Now on the other side you don't have the little clamp for the ABS block and um, the ABS cable but you do have the, the bolt for the little brake line so we'll undo that. There's one and then that one so yeah, basically there, there's a captive nut on the inside of the mudguard that these bolts actually go into. So that's why they need to be removed. And there we are, that's two. So as you can see now, that's nice and loose. And this side of the mudguard is free to move. So what I'll do, I'll get the ones out on the other side and then we can actually withdraw the mudguard itself. Okay, that's all the bolts out either side. And then literally, it's just a case of gently sliding them forward and there we are here's the little captive things that i was talking about they just sit in there on either side so uh just make sure that they're they're there uh, and yeah there we are that is the mudguard removed okay let me go and put this away and then uh i'll bring you back and we'll talk about what we've uh what we've done here okay guys as you can see, that is all the bodywork stripped off the bike completely. Um, doesn't take too long, um, including the filming elements of it. This is probably taking about an hour, um, you know, and obviously the, the f filming of it does take uh, a little bit of time, so it adds on a little bit of time. But I reckon if I hadn't been filming, I reckon I'd have got all this off in about 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes. Um, it's not too taxing, not too difficult. You could do it with some basic hand tools. Um, so yeah, so for those guys that were asking for this video, I hope, hope that's um, what you wanted. Um, you know, I, I do aim to uh, uh, put out content that people want to see. So yeah, if that, um, if that helps you out then, guys, um, 
fire a message into the uh, into the comments below and let me know because uh, I'd be you know I'm, I'd be I'd be interested to know if that was um, you know what you needed in order to help you out. Obviously, with all the body work, Alf, you know you've got access to a multitude of things. We've got all the electrical stuff under here. Um, you know brakes uh there's the, the, a lot of the engine components you can access with all the fairings off um as well as underneath the uh the tail unit um so yeah you, you know um again getting, getting the fairings off quite often is uh, a good way to uh gain access to all the bits that you need and it can help you avoid scratching the paintwork um you know during the process uh anyway yeah so um guys i'm gonna wrap up here we'll call that the end of this episode uh, I hope that you, uh, you know, you, you enjoyed it and um, yeah, see you all again for the next one. Uh, don't forget to join me on the socials. The, the links are all in the bottom uh, and I will see you all over there. You guys take care now. Bye bye. <laughs>